we headed out to the aquarium, which is right at the south end of Tumbi Island. Immediately we came across one of these catfish, locally known as Campango. As it attempted to make its way under this ledge, a Cornish Jack shot out and the catfish decided to flee. The catfish ended up scurrying to the edge of a ledge before sinking down into the inky depths. Shortly afterwards, I came across another catfish. It was just sitting over the sand and gyrating its body slightly. Perhaps it was attempting to pick up any electrical vibrations through its feelers and pick up any potential prey. We continued along and there's quite a few cichlids at the bottom. Eventually I came across another little crab scurrying across the bottom. And as I turned to have a closer look at the crab, he had made his way to a little gully of sand in between two rocks and in the silt he had kind of nestled himself to escape our attention. Perhaps eventually we became too much and he decided to scurry off and continue foraging for the evening. Now this is a fascinating and beautiful fish. This is the Protomelis. And it's the first time on this expedition that I've had an opportunity to be able to illustrate the egg spots that you find on the anal fin. Now these egg spots are said to represent relatively accurately the size, shape and color of the eggs that the females will lay. This is a male fish. Once they've caught the female and she has laid her eggs within a bower, she will then pick up the eggs in her mouth to prevent them being predated on and move towards his anal fin and gently muzzle this anal fin and this will inspire him to release sperm. The sperm then go into her mouth and the fascinating process of internal fertilization takes place. And before we knew it, it was all too soon and we had to head up to the surface. Old branches cast dark shadows and big overhangs set a really moody underwater scene. I continue to head into the shallows where there is a lot of light and it's really really beautiful as this light begins to penetrate. And finally I arrived at my destination. This is the female Serenochromus which I have revisited several times over the past few weeks. Once again she was around and her fry were just milling about the rock. As I approach she cruises in the background just keeping a watchful eye and the fry tend to sink down to put the rock between themselves and myself. And then that amazing instinct which these cichlids have developed over thousands of years here so that the species may survive. At any sign of danger, the cichlids head towards the mother and they will retreat inside to the safety of her mouth. These fry are nearly a month old and they're right at the final stages of actually being able to enter the mother's mouth and very soon they will need to start to fend for themselves. Experts reckon that perhaps only two fry from every clutch will actually make it to breeding maturity. So the odds are heavily stacked and the mother provides them with the best chance of survival 
at this vulnerable stage of their lives. It feels like such a privilege to be able to be there and to witness this adaptation of life that I am really, truly grateful for this experience. We've passed a couple of ledges down to the bottom, which ends off at about 12 to 13 meters. And we found quite a few different fish species down here. Big groups of uh, carrying teen were milling about the, the pinnacles that you found here. We found quite a few blacktails still tucked under their caves. Obviously this time of the day is pretty much uh, feeding time for a lot of the pelagic animals. Some of these caves are pretty big here on the heads and uh, quite intimidating when you swim up towards them. I went into one particular one and found a bit of a disturbing sight. This was the remains of a very large octopus. On the bottom, within these caves, you quite often as well find very interesting little invertebrates like these nudibranchs. This guy was battling along the bottom with quite a strong surge and, and the strong current pushing into the, into the estuary. And then after the dive, making our way back up to the surface, I uh, bumped into one of the common cuttlefish here. And we've been seeing quite a few of these animals in, in the Nasna estuary. So it was a really interesting and different dive for us. 